해요 at h a m m e r t o o Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh. oh, oh, sorry about that. I, I, I have a habit of slipping back into the Planko language. <laughs> It's good to finally meet you in person. I'm Bernard, although I insist you call me Bernie. The only person who calls me Bernard is my wife. <laughs> And even then, only when I've tracked elephant dung into the carpets. <laughs> As you know, I own several zoos. But I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. This is the first zoo I ever opened, and a source of great pride for me. And prides, thanks to a lion breeding program we ran in the 80s. <laughs> But we're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly, our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Uh, poor devil kept sneezing his dentures into the lion habitat. So, It's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you in at the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. Oh, she's a hard worker. And she'll expect you to be, too. But I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire, or even better, <laughs> one that isn't on fire. Less shouting that way. <laughs> Hello there. From that rosy, fresh face of yours, I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma, because we're about to get really hands-on. But before we begin the real work, how about we familiarize you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it and visiting some of our beautiful animals? We'll start by popping over and having a look-see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. So we're now in the first level of our brand new career mode. Jim, could you tell us a bit about Bernie and Nancy? Who are these characters? Bernie is what we class as a mission giver within the game. He appears at the start of a scenario to introduce it, and then he'll pop up again after you've achieved bronze, silver and gold in your objectives. Bernie's really quite a lovely chap, and, and he cares deeply for animals and wants to use his zoos as a force for good. He's very warm towards you as a player, and he loves to make terrible dad jokes. <laughs> Nancy is Bernie's head zookeeper and has worked with Bernie for a very long time. Her job is to teach you what to do in order to build a successful zoo. She's got a dry sense of humour and a no-nonsense attitude. She's incredibly knowledgeable about animals and is very passionate about their welfare, which is why she's Bernie's head zookeeper. And why was it so important to have a narrative in Planet Zoo? We wanted to give the player an added purpose to play through the career. We've now got sequential scenarios in the career uh, that take place all over the globe with lots of different challenges to face in each of them. A lot of care has gone in to make sure the narrative enhances the scenarios and the career mode as a whole. We've made sure there's a strong message about animal welfare and conservation, but we've also kept it light-hearted and family-friendly. So some feedback we received on Planet Coaster previously was the need for more tutorials and explanations. So was that a driving factor for improving it in Planet Zoo? Definitely. Planet Coaster had so many great features that were quite difficult to discover. So for Planet Zoo, we're teaching you how to build a zoo because there's just so much depth and so much to learn in the game. So let's take a look at the common warthogs. We have to go to the animal market to acquire them for our zoo, correct? That's correct. Uh, the animal market is where players can go to purchase animals to place into their zoo. Each animal listed has a price based on their rating and the quality of their genetics. So this will be an important consideration for players, especially if you're planning on breeding your animals. The list will be full of animals usually, but it's been emptied to keep things simple for tutorial purposes. There will be different animals available in the marketplace depending on the scenario that you're in too. Once you've purchased your animals, they'll be waiting in the trade center until you're ready for them to be sent into your habitat. This is to allow you time to ensure that your habitat has a complete barrier and a habitat gate, as well as any other preparations you might like to make in advance. When you're ready, you can click Send to Zoo and watch as your caretakers fetch them from the Trade Center and drop them off in your chosen habitat, which is a really nice feature that we've added. So what does the game tell us about the animal welfare so that we can make sure that they are thriving? There are a few different ways to check up on your animals and make sure that they're happy, but the most comprehensive breakdown can be found in your animal info panel. You can access this by selecting any animal that you would like to take a closer look at, and it will give you an overview of that animal's current welfare. If something is showing up as orange or red, then you'll want to try and address these issues that are causing that animal to be unhappy. When a category is showing up as green, this means that the animal is content within this area. You can also check all of your animal's welfare by using the heat map feature and selecting animal welfare. 
Uh, this will color any animals that are unhappy as orange or red. So you can really easily see where there are problems in your zoo um, and how to address those. We can use all of this information to see that the warthogs still need a feeding and water station, as well as some enrichment items to increase their happiness. We haven't used them in this tutorial, but we have implemented filters for all the species in game, so that players can really easily see which feeders and enrichment items are needed for each animal. Feeding stations are important as they allow players to have control over their placement. If players don't have these, then keepers will place food at random placements on the floor. It's a really important thing to consider, all of the object placements and the feeders, but that's something I'll go into more detail later. So we're over at the common ostrich habitat now, so what's happening here as we can't place the animals yet? Before you can place uh, the ostriches in the zoo, we've got to build them somewhere to live. So this means building a complete loop of barrier. Uh, we've already got some, and we just need to finish it off. We build the habitats using our piece-by-piece -piece barrier editor. You can change the length of each barrier section, whether a section is curved or straight, and a load of other things as well. While we're building this one in brick, there are several different types of barrier available, including one-way glass and null barriers. Ooh. So this still isn't complete, as the guests can't see anything? No, not yet. An important part of building a habitat is making sure that the guests can see into it. Guests obviously want to see the animals when they go to a zoo, and they gain happiness from getting good views. Mm. So glass is obviously a great way to do it, and it's easy to swap one type of barrier for another by selecting uh, the barrier that's already there and clicking a different barrier type. You can also build paths higher, so your guests get a better view just by looking over the habitat barrier, or you can build bridges to go over the top of a habitat. There's a lot of different ways to give guests views. Great. However, making it so every inch of a habitat can be seen by guests can be quite problematic. So when you're building a habitat, you need to make sure your animals have somewhere to disappear to. This is where one-way glass comes in really handy. Yeah. And as we continue to upgrade our common ostrich habitat, how important is object placement? Object placement is very important as it impacts how and where your animals react and interact with them, which will also impact guest visibility and happiness too. That's things like placing feeders and uh, drinking stations, toys near guest viewing points, means that animals will be more likely to go there more often. It means that guests will get more views of your animals, they'll be happier um, and all around give you a better zoo. It's also good to consider things like donation points, setting these up uh, for your guests uh, near those viewing points it will make guests more likely to donate to your zoo. Yes, that's of interesting. <laughs> and uh, whilst being strategic with placement in habitats, the same will go for staff and facility buildings? Yeah, very much so. We've definitely added a strategy to building a zoo into the game. To start with, guests don't really like seeing facility buildings. Mm. So like the keeper huts and staff buildings, so you need to build these far away from guests. Where we're placing the keeper hut here is more than far enough away from the guests. More importantly, the path it connects up to is a staff-only path. All of our facilities and shops in the game now require power to run as well. The keeper hut we've just placed isn't powered, so we're going to need to make sure it is by adding a transformer in. When you place a transformer in the game, we automatically put you into the power heat map so you can see what needs powering. All right, so, so far we've learned how to acquire our animals and make them happy, how to build a basic habitat and enrich it with whatever the animal needs to thrive, and how to think about placing your objects and buildings in your zoo. So what's next for us? Uh, I think we should look at putting together a Bengal tiger habitat. Ooh. Ooh. So first of all, we need to build up the perimeter of the habitat. That will be looking at the walls and getting the habitat gate in there so that the keeper can obviously have access to the habitat and keep them clean and fed. At this stage, we want to look at um, making sure that we're including a lake for the animals. What you need to bear in mind when you are putting um, lakes or anything like that in your habitats is that you need to keep the water clean. So you need to use facility items uh, like the uh, water treatment facility and that will make sure that your water stays clean and drinkable for your animals. Great. Once we've done that, we want to make sure that the animals have food ready to go. Over time and through research, you can improve the food quality for all of your animals in your zoo and uh, give them more enrichment from the food that they get. When we've got the animals and they're in our habitat and they're ready to go, we want to start improving their welfare by adding enrichment to their habitat. This is something that you're going to want to do for every habitat that you've created uh, to make sure that your animals aren't just uh, 
the bare necessity survival. Uh, we want to make sure that the animals are happy and they are thriving in the habitats that you're creating. Another thing that we'll want to consider is, uh, as Jim mentioned earlier, you need to make sure that your animals have areas of privacy um, and sanctuary from things like guests and also the weather. You need to make sure that you're uh, building shelters, which you can either do piece by piece yourself. You can use terrain to, to do this, but also we're going to be adding a whole load of blueprints. Oh, great. So this is going to be for everything. Uh, we're making sure that players who maybe aren't so creatively inclined will be able to get into the game, jump into the management and put something beautiful down um, and just really get stuck in uh, without having to worry too much about the piece by piece details if they find it overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so shelter is really, really great because that, that means animals can hide there if it's raining, if it's snowing. We've got systems in place that will mean that the rain obviously won't hit down under those shelters so your animals will be able to find sanctuary there. This is also a really good spot for bedding um, as well that you can put down and if you're really clever you can do some magic with getting animals to sleep without realising that they're being watched by guests. Oh. Uh, so it's, another, it's another good thing with uh, the placement and how you, how you can utilise that. Nice. Obviously the kind, of, the kind of terrain that you're putting in your habitats is really, really important. So again, all this information is in your info panel. Um, you'll want to look at what the Bengal tigers like and make sure that you're painting that. So we have feeds uh, in, the, in the info panel that will give you the same system, so the red, amber and green. Um, as you're painting the terrain, you'll be able to see this change and make sure that you can get them um, to get the right suitability for their needs. I love those sliders, they're so it's good. really, really <laughs> handy, <It's> very <laughs> satisfying, <laughs> doing the tiny little tweaks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's really, really great. And then obviously layering up on top of that, you've got plants and foliage, so we've got so many new plants and foliage um, and these all pertain to different biomes, different continents have all been specifically added to go in for different animals needs and requirements where they, where they originate from and what is their, what they would find in their natural environment. Awesome. Animals will like the plants that are from their native continent and biome so you, it generally is best to get both of these matching where you can. Awesome, that looks great. So now that we've obtained another star, so completed a second objective, how would we continue? For this particular scenario, we've still got to learn about social welfare, privacy and temperature control in habitats. After that, you are then uh, given the objective to raise the average animal welfare throughout the whole zoo, taking into account everything that you've learned in the tutorial so far. As far as the game's concerned, there's still so much to discover and enjoy. There are so many more incredible animals to see that have been created and brought to life by the amazing team. There are lots of scenarios left to play and the different challenges that you'll face in those. And if you just want to build a zoo so you can just watch these amazing animals, then you, know, you can do that too. Great. And uh, I, I think I speak for the whole team when, when I say we really can't wait for everyone to get their hands on Planet Zoo. <laughs>